let's talk modern. Mm. I could talk about modern for days, just days, because it's so great. Uh, we've covered so much of it this year on the SD Tour. We're going to cover so much of it next year, too, uh, because modern is Magic's most popular format. Numbers have proven it. Viewership has proven it. And it's also just a blast to play. I don't, once you know what you're signing up for, just who even cares, right? Four spell snare guy over here, <laughs> burn guy over there. I don't even know what you play in modern right now, Matthias. I've, I don't I think Evil Titan. Are you Give still scape shifting? I didn't no, know. No, Prime Evil Titan. Not scape just Prime Evil Titan. Okay. There's like a lot of different ways to play them. All right. hey, fair but enough. But all of them are great. You can do literally whatever you want in the format. There are definitely, like, there's a hierarchy of best decks in the format, yes. But you can do whatever you want. And as long as you understand your deck and the matchups, you can win. And that's what makes the format so great. Now, at the end of the day, I still think the best deck is Grixis Death Shadow. I still think that that's true. But it's not the best deck by such a wide margin that it's unbeatable, Patrick, and I think that's what kind of makes it nice. Yes, Death Shadow is a very good card. Tassiger, Cycling Street Wraith, Fatal Push, Snapcaster Mage, Colgon's Command, all these things are in the deck. It's a very lean machine, but it is beatable. Now the question is, do you want to join it or do you want to beat it for this particular weekend? Uh, I would be inclined to join it. I, I think it is the best deck in the format currently. Uh, and part of that comes from the fact that it has the best rates. Uh, a lot of the format's best cards just appear in this deck. And on top of that, because you're doing fetch lands and can trips and cycling, you just get the better end of the land spell distribution than your opponent does in a lot of games. And that win rate is baked into every single matchup. You just lose less games to flood and screw than other people do. So that combined with the deck's overall efficiency and power level, I, I think it's not by a wide margin, and people are going to play all sorts of decks. It would surprise me if Grixis Death Shadow was any more than... 10, 15 percent of the room. It's mm. not going to be all over the place, but I do think it's the format's best deck by a margin. People like to people like to say a format has a best deck. That's the thing that people like to do for sure. standards, team or energy. Uh, for modern, it is definitely Grixis Death Shadow Matthias. Now again, my question for you: Join it or beat it? I'm not joining it, and I'm actually going to go. I don't even believe it's the best deck in modern okay. right okay. now. We're going to get to that one in a second here. Um, I do see when you want like a deck that has a chance to win every matchup, I think Grixis Death Shadow is your deck here. And a lot of the top players in the room are going to be drawn to that. You know, they, they want everything to be no worse than 40%. Great. This is a really strong deck. I think it has the tools to win a lot of those matchups, so we will see it this weekend. Now, there is some peel, right, where you have a deck where you have no undead matchups, right? Like, you have enough cards throughout your 75, you have enough manipulation with Serum Visions and Thought Scour and Cycling Street Worth, where you can find your one ofs or your two ofs to be able to beat anything. Is that the kind of thing that appeals to you? I know you do like Delver strategy, so it kind of fits into that mold, Ryan. I've slung some Death Shadows, and kind of what actually got me off of the deck is how strong Ghost Quarter is against you. Strip Mine is a messed up magic card. True. And when your opponent just starts hitting all your lands and you can't cast your spells, it doesn't matter how good they are. You can have a one mana 10 10. If you can't cast it, it's just another blank, you know? Um, and kind of take off, we saw the Todd Stevens Collected Company deck, Eldrazi Tron registering up to four Ghost Hoarders now. All the Ghost Hoarders in the room really put you in a bad spot. There's also a significant percentage of Path to Exiles, of Fatal Pushes. Um, people are really gunning for your threats. I'm actually really intrigued by the five-color Death Shadow deck. I know uh, Chris Anderson, Clay Spicklemeyer, they've been advocates for the deck. One thing about that version is I don't know any human being smart enough to play that deck optimally sure. for so much as four rounds in a day. You can't get through a league without making game-losing mistakes, which is a real problem with that one. Uh, and it's just that the balance, the basic lands, I think, are really good and really important in modern right now. Well. It's a nice segue in Eldrazi Tron, a deck that has a lot of Ghost Quarters um, and might be working itself into playing a card like Field of Ruin as well, a card that's starting to pick up some popularity in modern and the Magic Online metagame. Now, Matthias, you said that you didn't feel like uh, Grixis Death Shadow is the best deck in the format. No. Do you think it's Eldrazi Tron? No. Okay, no. fair enough. No, no. What do you he think about that's great. That's great when the deck that I'm into, into isn't even one of the first two we're talking about. Uh, well, that's okay, well, a good what, sign. What do you that's feel true. about this particular um, deck that has Thought Not Seer and Endbringer yeah. and all that jazz? Eldrazi Tron, I think if you want to find, fight the fair fights, you know, if you want to beat Grixis Shadow, for example, Eldrazi Tron's one of the decks I'm going to go to right away. Uh, it, it's solid. I think big mana right now, I really I like a lot of what it's doing. In, in Modern, you have just a lot of different three-color decks. And we saw Jeskai in one of our most recent opens just getting played by a lot of players. And Eldrazi Tron, among other, like, even regular Tron right now, I actually think is a pretty good choice. Um, both of them have the ability to just pound for pound out-muscle these decks and then have some built-in late game. There's some appeal to just Urza's Mind, Urza's Tower, Urza's Power Plant, Big Spell, or in some cases, two Mattery Shapers when you're not running that hot. But 
you know, this deck does do some explosive things, and it still has Chalice of the Void, which wins games on its own as well. Todd Stevens put this deck on the map. He proved it's a good deck. It still continues to be a very good deck. One of the best decks in the format, Ryan. Is it something you'd want to play? If I drew as well as my Tron opponents did, <laughs> I would play this deck at every tournament. There's no worse feeling for me than when my opponent plays Urza Land, Expedition Map. I, the game's over. Pretty much. We go through the motions. <laughs> They're probably going to turn four Ulamog me. That just happens all the time. This deck is great. This is a deck that I frequently recommend. People say, I don't really know what to play in Modern right now. And I say, well, do you want to win on turn two sometimes? Eldrazi Tron's a pretty good pick for that. Chalice of the Void on one is just a supremely messed up magic card. It'll close some games very quickly. And just not that much has to go right to execute. Yeah, you know, this deck on paper, it kind of looks a little weird where it's like, you know, you've got some weird numbers. You've got like these Basil's Collars and these Walking Ballistas and all those other things. But at the end of the day, like, the power level of the deck, especially when you assemble the mana, Patrick, is through the roof. It is through the roof. I, my approach to modern has never really enticed me to pick up the Urza Lands because doing nothing for the first three turns of the game is just not where I'm at. Uh, and uh, I think the format has typically been a lot more hostile to that sort of thing, but things have slowed down a little bit. You are not under the gun as fast as you, or as frequently as you were in modern, say, 12 or 18 months ago. And you still have Chalice of the Void that cheats a lot of the matchups where speed is, the burden on you is to act fast. I think it's a very respectable deck. I, it would not be my first choice this weekend, but it will be very popular throughout the room and win plenty of matches. All right, we're moving on to Storm. A deck that took things by, I hate myself, by storm uh, for a couple of months. Baral, Goblin Electromancer. We got Gifts Ungiven back, finally. It's taken so long for this card to be like a staple in the format because it's so powerful. But you found a home with it here in this deck. Of course, Grape Shot's going to get the job, and unless someone has a meddling mage naming Grape Shot, then it's going to be a little more difficult to win, as Collins Mullen did demonstrate in Cincinnati about a month ago. Ryan, is this your deck? I know you like... Grixis, do nothing, but your thoughts on this deck? I actually really enjoy playing four Spell Snare blue decks against Storm. At the same time, though, I feel like I'm one of the deck's only bad matchups in the room. Sure. This deck is absurdly powerful. You can disrupt them in one, two ways, but sometimes you can leave that third avenue open. That's how they're going to kill you. You have to fight them on the mana creature. You have to have a removal spell for that. You have to fight them on the stack. They can make a ton of mana, go off with Gifts Ungiven, and they have deterministic wins from there. And you have to hit their graveyard, because if you give them enough time, they'll pass in flames and then just cast all those spells again, build a big storm count that way. I think this deck is supremely powerful. Very much not my style. Um, I like, you know, attacking like three times, and that's the game or whatever. Sure, sure. Um, but it, the power level is certainly there. Patrick, uh, well, I, I can't ever imagine you playing a storm deck. That's not even, my mind's eye can't see it. But you can respect it. I know you certainly try to beat it. Um, this deck coming in, you got to respect it this weekend, right? Yep. The deck's not generally not great against Lightning Bolt, both because it is interaction and also this deck I don't think handles a lot of removal backed up by a quick clock all that well. That's one of the vulnerabilities. But you do have to close out the game pretty fast. It's impressive this deck's durability. I, I played matches where. I've killed a bunch of stuff, I've disrupted them in some ways, but just on a long enough timeline, they can gift for a bunch of rituals, pass in flames, and win even without one of the reducers. So there's a lot of different ways you can attack the deck. It doesn't have to be all one thing, but you do need to have a, a healthy mixture of pressure, disruption, and being able to interact with the graveyard specifically. Is this, it's this one, isn't it? I knew it, I knew it was this one. <laughs> this, is your, this is your best deck, huh? Uh, Storm, I think, is in a really great spot right now. When you look at combo decks in Modern, one of the first things you want to do is, is look at their clocking speed, how fast they close. And Storm has a pretty good chance of turn threeing you, especially after, ever since the printing of Baral. You know, when your two-mana creature goes uncontested, you frequently can win on the next turn. So it checks that box. And then you go to their plan Bs when they, the deck does remove your two-drop. And Storm is still very competitive in those games as well. So you're looking for, first, first of all, you're looking for, you get a lot of wins off decks that don't kill your creatures. You even sometimes win against the control decks when they do kill your creatures. I think this deck, the addition of Opt and of the set, like I said, Baral has pushed its consistency to high enough where this is the deck I want to be registering right now. It's a scary deck. It's a very, 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 very scary deck. Uh, it can be beat, just because anything can be beat in Modern, but it's a very scary deck to play against. Another deck that's actually kind of scary to play against, even though it's been around for a very long time, is Affinity. Just your straightforward steel overseer, cranial platings, Arcbound Ravagers, sort of resilient sometimes, other times you draw Ornithopters and you wonder why you're even playing in the tournament. But the power level deck is high, it continues to still be good, 
and it's a deck where it's kind of weird. People might forget about it for one weekend, and if you forget for one weekend, Patrick, you're going to lose this deck. And I think the metagame has gotten to a point, this deck has become low enough in representation, that you aren't playing against Shatterstorms and Creeping Corrosions as much as you used to. I think people are trying to find cards that do double duty, so you're playing against more removal post-board, but I think the really egregious cyborg cards are not that prevalent, and this deck is very powerful, very consistent. I think it's underrepresented in modern time and time again, and I, I think the metagame could be right for this deck this weekend. Matthias, affinity for you. Yeah, I think Patrick's right. We're cycling back to the point where affinity's due for another big showing. Uh, this is this deck can always win its combo matchups. It's fast enough to race. The fair decks are moving away from the big haymakers. And then Eldrazi Thrawn getting big, that's always a great matchup for affinity. Hey, Spell Snare guy. Your Spell Snares are good against them. I'll give you that. All their best cards are two mana. But, you know, if you're not Spell Snare guy like you are, how do you feel about playing against this deck? This deck is great, um, and even if you have Spell Snare, Edge Champion is still a problem. True. It actually throws some curveballs that are outside of just artifacts. Even when you Stony Silence them, they're st still able to cast Edge Champion, Master of Ethereum. It can beat a lot of the hate. Uh, and artifact removal doesn't matter unless it's specifically Shatterstorm against Edge Champion. So. They just kind of have game everywhere. You can win games very quickly. You have a little bit of disruption available to you with Galvanic Glass that kind of puts you in the Storm matchup as well, even though that deck is on average at least a full turn faster than you. Um, this deck's a great choice. Um, you have to have the refs, certainly. You rarely see an inexperienced Affinity player close a tournament. They can certainly top eight. Um, but it, it's one that's good to have in your arsenal, I'll say that much. Now, of course, in modern, there's a million different decks, right? There's Jeskai, there's Obzon of various shades and builds. There's Jund, there's Urza, there's Green Black Tron, Green Red Tron. We could go on and on and on. Adrian Sullivan's here, he's gonna be ringing the lantern all weekend again. We could go on and on and on. But at the end of the day, we're looking at a diverse format. That's four rounds today, four rounds tomorrow, but standards are top eight. So you can really pick anything. I know you like Burn. Um, you like Primeval Titan still. I don't know why. It's a one-card combo. Okay, fine. And you like Spell Snare in something. So, and you know, and we've seen different things on Magic Online too. Like, there are blue-white control decks, there are taking turn decks, there are so many different things you can play. I, I don't know why I like casting Bitter Blossom, but I really do. Like, you can literally do whatever you want. That's what makes the format great. And we'll see some diversity over the course of this week, and I'm sure, especially when Nick Miller does our metagame breakdown. Collins Mullen is here. He destroyed Cincinnati with humans. We'll see if he's going to do that again, just as an example. But... As you can hear, Stephen Briggs, the head judge of this tournament, making his announcements. We're going to make our final announcements, which is we're going to pick our winners for the tournament. We're going to do a little pick em action here. So as we get ready to do that, I am going to go out on a limb. Daniel Fournier got second place last year. He lost in the finals to Brian Colville. He's here again. I'm going to pick him. I'm going to pick Daniel Fournier to get the job done here this weekend. Played Death Shadow in Modern. I don't remember his standard deck doesn't matter. Metagame's different. Don't need to remember it, because he's probably going to play Death Shadow Modern again. That's a good place to be. Give me, give me Daniel to improve just a little bit on the Invitational earlier this year. First place. Lock it in. Your pick. I'm going to take Todd Anderson. It's a good choice. I got two reasons. One, great Magic player, star, a star of multiple formats, whatever. I, you know, you can't go wrong picking him just on his experience and ability alone. Second, He's recently expressed enough ennui and dissatisfaction regarding Magic generally. <laughs> and when you're in that spot, that's when the game ropes you right back in. It's true, so it's true. I'm going to take Todd. All right, Todd Anderson for various reasons. Matthias Hunt, you. I like where you're going with the Dana Fournier pick, but I'm going to go with a different invitational runner-up. Uh, right now, Standard's in a spot where Jund, like four-color energy, team energy is the best deck. And I actually think Jund is pretty good in Modern as well. So I'm going to go with a player who we know plays Jund. I'm going to go with Jadeen Comparins. She's had great finishes with a... We have to assume she's playing Black, Green, and Modern. And I think that'll carry over into her Standard game. I like that choice. Ryan, we're coming to you. Brennan Michael DeCandio. <laughs> so he is just one of the best Standard players on the tour. Arguably, in contention, one of the best Standard players in the world when he has his his deck down. We saw him just dominate with Green Black Delirium previously in this similar standard environment. Yes. Uh, not fully the same. Right now he's been working on this Grixis deck, which obviously resonates with me, yeah. but he's been putting up results as well if you watch his stream. Basically 4 one every league, making some changes. When he has his finger on the pulse of a metagame, he is unstoppable, and it's a standard top eight. 
Love his odds. Uh, we're going to take a look at Nick Miller's pick here. Nick Miller's pick is Jonathan Rossum. Rhymes with awesome. Uh, that's how I remember how to say his last name. It's a little cheap trick there for you at home. Um, Jess Guy Control, we know he's playing in modern. We all, everyone who plays against him will know that. And he always wins with this deck. Uh, how you feel about Jeskai Control is irrelevant because he wins with it. So we know that he'll probably, what, at worst, 6-2? Jonathan Rossum is one of those best deck players where if you give him a, car, a deck of three colors and full of the most powerful cards in the format, he's shown a lot of prowess at playing that. I, I expect him to be playing Teamer Energy in Standard 2, and these both decks are both in his wheelhouse. Yeah, I mean, I expect at least a 6-2 in Modern. If he can pick up some Standard wins, like you mentioned, probably Teamer Energy, maybe 4-color, depending on what he yeah. expects, uh, he should be just fine. So I like Nick's picks as well, and those are our picks here in the booth. So as Stephen Briggs, our head judge of our Invitational Weekend, finishes his final announcements, we are going to get ready for a short break here, where we're going to get everything set up, and we're going to start some coverage for you guys. Round number one is going to be underway here in just a handful of minutes. So we're going to take a bit of a commercial break, let you guys hear from our sponsor of the show. That'll be the wonderful people over at Twitch and Ultimate Guard, and we do come back. Patrick and I will kick us off. We'll take a look at our bingo boards. You'll find that on social media as well, and we'll have a bunch of fun. So we'll see you guys back here from the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia for our Season 2 Invitational Weekend. Just a bit. 